does Crackdown 3 look like it will live up to four years of hype around it? Mind you, we're not talking about how the game itself will be. Sumo Digital is a talented developer, and we think it can pull off a fun game. We're talking about how it looks, and the tech powering it. Ever since it was first revealed, we were told it would be a technical showpiece, from the cloud-powered destruction in the multiplayer mode to its eventual status as an Xbox One X showcase game. What we were shown off at E3 is decidedly not living up to that promise, but that's our opinion. You could take a look at the newest screenshot for the game, which actually looks a fair bit better than what we got to see at E3. Crackdown 3 is due out on the Xbox One, including Xbox One X announcements and Windows 10 PCs, on November 7th this year. The MPD group was provided some preliminary results for its June 2017 report, and noted that the PlayStation 4 was the top-selling console for the month, spurring ahead of the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. This is primarily thanks to the Gold 1TB PlayStation 4 Slim model that arrived prior to E3. This SKU was actually offered at a limited-time discount for $250, with the console's price having gone back up to $300 since then. With the new color and overall limited edition status that it brought, sales were driven up in favor of Sony's console. That being said, Nintendo Switch sales are still very strong. Limited supplies may still be hindering consumers as many have reported not finding the console in shops. Regardless, NPD analyst Matt Pescatella stated that the overall spending on hardware compared to the same period last year had risen by $1.4 billion. The Nintendo Switch was credited as being the catalyst for this growth. We never got Half-Life 3 or Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Fans worldwide have made their peace with the fact that the resolution of the cliffhangers in those games is never coming. However, speaking in a recent interview, Mark Laidlaw, who worked as a writer with Valve on the Half-Life games, has revealed that the original plan was for each Half-Life game to end on a cliffhanger. This way, the series would be able to continue indefinitely. I will say that I expected every installment would end without resolution, forever and ever. There was some rumor going around that Episode 3 or Half-Life 3 would end Gordon Freeman's story, and I don't think that was accurate. Laidlaw said in an interview with Arcade Attack, my intention was that Episode 3 would simply tie up the plot threads that were particular to Half-Life 2, but it would still end like Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2, with Gordon in an indeterminate space, on hold, waiting for the next game to begin. So one cliffhanger after another. We suppose fans may still have been okay with it as long as the series had continued on instead of the fate that it went on to suffer. As it stands right now, the story remains unfinished and untold, and Half-Life itself is a relic of a time when Valve was on the cutting edge of single-player games. It's not been getting a lot of attention, but Atari is priming itself to release a brand new console next year, which it calls the Atari Box. And today, we got our first look at what the final console may look like via renders for it. Our objective is to create a new product that stays true to our heritage while appealing to both old and new fans of Atari. Atari said, speaking of the new design, the new design will have SD card ports, four USB ports, and an HDMI port. As you can guess, these ports suggest modern internal specs. It also means that while we will be delivering classic gaming content, we will also be delivering current gaming content, Atari confirmed. Does this mean we're getting a fourth contender in the market? It barely seems big enough to support three, with Sony dominating, Nintendo doing well by doing their own thing, and Microsoft floundering. Do we think a fourth system will do any good at all? Plus, do we trust modern Atari to be able to manage their own console? These are all questions that need answering, but till such time that we get those answers, I suppose we can at least appreciate these renders. We've always joked that publishers around the world heaved a sigh of relief when Red Dead Redemption 2 was delayed into next year, since it gave them a clearer window for their games to do well. Now Ubisoft has admitted in as many words that Red Dead Redemption 2's delay will, will probably be good for the games that it plans on releasing in the long run. Clearly, the fact that there is no Red Dead Redemption 2 is a positive for our fiscal year 2018. This is something that we've taken into our financial assumptions, so the absence of that game is of course giving us a better window for the launch of some of our games. Ubisoft CFO Elaine Martinez said to shareholders in the latest financial briefing, At this time, however, it's too early to say what kind of impact Red Dead Redemption's 2 delay could have for the next few months. Obviously, we have more confidence, but we think it's too early to change our guidance, he added. It makes sense. Rockstar games are mammoth games that not only sell millions on the first day, but then sustain their sales over years. No other company in the industry manages that. Most publishers probably don't want to be competing with a new Rockstar game, and undoubtedly, Ubisoft, with many games that fall under similar umbrellas as Rockstar's, is among them. Of course, now Red Dead Redemption 2 will be terrorizing publishers next year, so there is that. Arguably the most iconic character in the Kingdom Hearts series is Sephiroth, the villain from Final Fantasy VII, who also made it his job to terrorize Kingdom Hearts players. He's already shown up in the series twice, but he may not necessarily be back in Kingdom Hearts 3. I can't say for certain, I hope, hint, 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 I can't say for certain. In terms of Sephiroth, do you feel like you want to battle Sephiroth again? Director Tetsuya Nomura said in an interview with The Mirror before giving a more concrete answer. We can't say anything at this time, but in terms of Sephiroth specifically, 
My development team are worried that we've had him back so many times, so they're maybe worried it might be redundant at this point. We're still deliberating on it. No doubt most Kingdom Hearts players are hoping that the team gets over itself and brings him back since, again, he is a fan favorite character after all. Kingdom Hearts 3 is due out next year on Xbox One and PS4, but of course, there is every chance that the game ends up getting delayed, since in the end, it is a Square Enix game, and when was the last time one of those ended up releasing on time? With Kingdom Hearts 3, video games are finally realizing a promise made to us almost two decades ago and realizing Toy Story level graphics in real time. And these new screenshots for the game, which you can see for yourself, show us just how gorgeous and beautiful the game looks by specifically highlighting the Toy Story world. Of course, other worlds and characters are shown off in these screenshots too, but the star of the show here is undoubtedly the Toy Story world. Maleficent, Pete, and Hades are all additional characters that are also shown off in these screenshots. Kingdom Hearts 3 is due out in 2018. That's what Square Enix claims, but this is a company known for persistent delays, on the Xbox One and PS4. And it's also going to be one of the first major Unreal Engine 4 games from Square after Dragon Quest. Ubisoft has been having a pretty good year even with a small number of releases thus far. According to the publisher in its latest financial report for the quarter ending June 30th, Ghost Recon Wildlands was its biggest hit of 2017, when combining digital and physical sales for the title in North America, Australia, Japan, and Europe. It's especially interesting when you consider that Ghost Recon Wildlands released in March 2017. Thus far, Ubisoft has released a myriad of updates for Ghost Recon Wildlands, including the Narco Road and Fallen Ghost DLC packs, Tier 1 mode, Seasons, and the usual bug fixes. Despite the critical reception being above average as a whole, Wildlands has been a regular in the top 10 for several regions. What are your thoughts on Ghost Recon Wildlands being one of the best-selling titles of 2017, especially with other releases like Neo, Nier Automata, Persona 5, and Horizon Zero Dawn having received more praise? Let us know in the comments below and stay tuned for more updates. That'll be it for this video. If you like what we're doing, please go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.